And, and it we looks, are live. We are live. The button has been pressed. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Adamchuk. My name is Neil Thrussell. And we are incredibly, incredibly proud to announce our very special guest today, Mr. Sean Stevenson. How are you? Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for making this time, for joining us today, Sean. We understand how busy your schedule is. You've got many things on the go right now. So we definitely want to honor you for taking this time. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Excellent, excellent. One of the things that we want to jump right into is success. And really, how do you define success? Fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Being able to actually enjoy your life the way it is right now. You know, success is not, well, money is enjoyable. If you can make a lot of money and not be fulfilled, it's not success. And I, I've learned that from many mentors, and I've tested that out every single time. Excuse me, I'm trying not to sneeze. <laughs> um, I've tested it out. You know, when you, uh, when you make a bunch of money, but you're not feeling like you're on purpose, it's empty money. When you have a sexual relationship with somebody and there's no emotional connection, there's no purpose. Like, it's not rewarding. You know, and you do anything that there's not that deep underlining purpose and intention, it's not fulfilling. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Looking at the four D's of success um, and really understanding them that they're desire, determination, dedication, and discipline. You know, how have you applied those in your life and how have they helped you create that success? Well, desire is huge. I'll just go through how each of them impact me. Uh, desire is huge because I, for me, I hear desire and I think of being hungry. You know, are you, uh, you have something, you have a, a future that's bright and calling you. Um, and I think of determination, it's just this mentality, you know, I'm willing to die for what I'm working on. I'm determined. You can't stop me. Only death can. And it's huge. Um, dedication I just saying that, you know, I'm going to stick with this. I'm not going to chase the new shiny object. Look, it's always easier to chase the shiny object because then you're constantly starting over. So then you're never feeling failure. When you start something, there's no real threat of failure. So it's easy to just be like not dedicated because uh, then you don't have to feel the sting of when things don't start going as planned. Dedication's huge. And discipline, this is probably the biggest thing that I've learned in the last two years of my life is you don't get somewhere without carving out specific rituals and structures and respecting time. And people who are disciplined do just that. You know, I, I find that I get far more done when I'm busy than when I'm not busy. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and I love that. You know, people in this day and age, I think there's a, there's a different connotation to discipline people thinking that's something bad. Neil, you've got a great reference on that. Would you be able to share that with us? I don't know. I've got many. Which one were you talking about, Jamie? <laughs> Bring it on. You've got many. In a discipline. I'm, I'm, I'm a training to be a marathon. I'm training to do my first marathon. And without the discipline of going out, what, whether – dependent doesn't want you're raining sunshiny hot or cold or snow i need to be out there to put the miles on my feet so i need to be disciplined for my goal excellent thank you so much for that sean looking at those at those four d's and maybe picking a specific example from your life can you can you tell us how those really help to create that success maybe there's one particular thing well, I was determined to get Tony Robbins to write the foreword to my first book. And everybody else told me it wasn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, and I just told Trump, I believed in the, the image that I was heading toward. And when everybody else said it's not going to happen, I just kept sitting with the image, sitting with the image, until one day I get a call 
I don't know, it was an email from uh, Tony Robbins. And it was, Sean, there's something wrong with my speaker system in my house. And uh, I need you to come over and fix it. And I'm like, why the hell is Tony Robbins asking me this? Well, it was because his speaker guy was named Sean, the guy that handles wiring his whole house. And he picked me as the wrong contact. In his <laughs> so was that an accident? No, I think it was because I was so determined. You know, when you are so clear with what you want, the world lines up behind you and says, aye, aye, Captain. When people are not clear on what they want, they get misled and they mislead. And so you got to know what you want and make no apologies ever. I love that. Thank you. So for those that don't know, this is the first time that they're blessed to be with Sean. Um, I really highly recommend you go to seanstevenson.com and see what he's about. Because this is a man that has basically fought tooth and nail from birth to his age right now to be on this planet. He was born with a terribly debilitating disease. I don't know how many hundreds of bones you've broken in your life. And I think it was two or three years ago that you almost died again. And so this is, where do you find the strength to just keep fighting? Because my life's not about me. It's about my mission. And uh-huh. I'm going to die for my mission. I'll, I'll risk anything for my mission. I'll cut out those closest to me if they stand in the way of my mission. The only thing that's going to take me out of my mission is the Grim Reaper. That's it. Would it, is this too bold for me to ask you what is your mission in life, Sean? Sure. To rid the world of insecurity. That feeling that you're not enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not educated. You're not, you're not uh, talented enough. You're not tall enough. You're not thin enough. It's a bunch of bullshit. You are yes. enough. You yes. are enough. I, that is a beautiful mission. Yeah, if we can get rid of insecurity, we all can have a good time with each other. Sweet. I love it. Um, I'd like just to share one of the, the four Ds that, uh, that Jamie and I had to go through to get Sean on here was deter- dogged determination. Because I, I use Facebook, and I've followed Sean a couple, for many years. I followed him through his three-foot-high chef phase. I followed him while he was dressed up as Rambo on a lawn. I've, I have followed Sean. And uh, so I emailed, I Facebook messaged him, and I said, please, 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 Sean, can you come and be on the four Ds of success? And he very politely and professionally responded and said, I wish you all the success, but uh, this isn't a good fit right now. So thank you. Well, Jamie had been off to a Tony Ro- or Tony Robbins uh, program. He came back and he fired off an email and he sent it to, to Sean and Sean said yes. So for us, that was dogged determination. So thank well, you for... Be- you're welcome. It was determination, but I'll tell you what I also think it was. I think it was you changed your approach because when, when I'm going after something in life, if it's not going as planned, I don't just keep doing the same thing. That's the definition of insanity. You yes. keep sending me Facebook messengers. You sent, it, was, it showed up through another format. And I'm very driven by human connection. And when I meet a human that I have a physical experience like shaking their hand or hugging them or listening to their story. And then they tell me later, hey, I have a podcast or hey, that's a different experience than a flat, cold, you know, monitor. And, you know, when you have a million followers on social media and somebody hits you up and you do a quick Google and you find they're not 2020, Barbara Walters, you know, the things that grab attention, um, you think, well, we got to say, Notice some things because we only have so much time in the day. But when that person then shows up through another format with a different approach, you know, and another thing that I think is important to the listener 
to experiences that you got to be so damn good no one can ignore you. And so polite and caring and think about like, what is driving this person? Not, not what is my agenda? You know, Tony Robbins taught me when I was a little boy. I was 19 years old. He was like a little boy. And uh, <laughs> he said, uh, Sean, you can't motivate people for your reasons. You got to motivate them through theirs. And this is what makes sales a beautiful experience. It's what makes relationships a beautiful experience. It makes friendships a beautiful experience. Just never lose sight that people are motivated for their reasons, not yours. So the ideal thing is to see if you can get yours to line up with theirs, not the other way around. Yes. So thank you. Yeah, that, that's absolutely amazing. And I mean, myself coming in contact with, with you, Sean, it was actually through Tony. I, I got a hold of one of his old, 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 old tape sets and all that. And he, he, he told your story. And I didn't know who you were at the time. It's like, I heard the story and it's like, I cried. I'm probably going to cry a little bit now because it, it brought so much passion to my life. It's like, like, like here's this man, you know, the, the, this very young man at this time, and he's faced with all these challenges. He didn't let that stop him. He didn't say, oh, well, you know what? This is the way things are. I just simply have to accept it. No, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a change. And you did that. And that's what inspires me. Like, like I heard that every time I listen to that, that thing over and over, I cry again because it, it's so passionate. It's so emotional. And, uh, and I had to find out who this guy was. It's like, who is this guy that Tony's talking about? It's like, and it's you. And that's, that's incredible. You know, so again, definitely honor you for being here and taking this time. My pleasure. And I'm glad I could be in your life in the way that I've helped you at the time that I've helped you. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, you know, when you've been presented with maybe a specific outcome, something that didn't really go the way you wanted to, maybe what someone might actually call a failure. How do you approach that? And, you know, what do you get from that? Well, almost everything I do fails. That's why I've learned to just do a few things. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, I've gone through so many different variations of my company. That didn't work. That didn't sell. No one cares about this. No one cared about that. They didn't think that was funny. They didn't want to hang out with you when you offered that. No, 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 no. Like, people only get to see the end product that it works. Like, when it works, that's what they see. But, you know, when I am creating something, I think two things. What are people craving and what are they needing? Sell people what they're craving. Teach teach what they need once you've hooked them and build a very successful career with that mindset. That's, that's really beautiful. And it just makes so much sense. You hook them in with that craving because there's yeah, always, because that, there's that, always that craving. And, you know, I hate to sound rudimentary or, or maybe a little blunt, I guess, but sex, money, uh, beauty, which goes into the sex part, um, uh, family safety. Um, if you think about the big things that catch people's attention, they're either high, high pleasure or high, high pain. Mm. It's very hard to come out and be like, I have a stamp collection book and everybody should love it. It's like not hitting pain points. Not hitting pain points. If you have stamp collection books, see like what is the greatest problem that stamp collectors have? Is it like their tongue goes dry from all the licking. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. Very good. Absolutely. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, thank you for that. So if I were someone that was just starting out, I'm brand new, I'm looking to get that success, I'm looking to find it, and it, it's been elusive. If there was one thing that you could share with me, that one most important thing, what would it be? The most important thing I can share. Yes. No pressure on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would say take good care of yourself. Mm. Never met a human that wanted to kill themselves that took great care of themselves. 
never met a human that was a miserable person to be around, but they took care of themselves. Those things don't come together. When people take care of themselves unapologetically, they do what their body needs, their mind needs, their soul needs, their intellect needs. When they do those self-care, what happens is when you take great care of yourself, you begin to trust yourself. And when you begin to trust yourself, then you can love yourself. You cannot skip a step. You must first take great care of yourself. Think about it, if you were incapacitated and you were in a wheelchair, you, you needed help and you had a nurse. That nurse was never taking care of you, never bringing you to the bathroom, never helping, never helping, never helping. Would you trust that person? Of course not. No. But they did an impeccable job of taking care of you. And you would trust them. And you, could, and you could love them. And that's wonderful. And that, and that ties us into something Neil loves to share. And that's really our secret 50. The secret 50 is our internal dojo on a martial arts. We all have to, to take care of ourselves above all. If we don't take care of that inner dojo, that ourself, as you so beautifully explained, then what have we got? If you, um, another way to put it is if you don't have your health, what do you have? Nothing. So thank you. That's exactly it. Wonderful. Um, Neil, did you have anything else you wanted to, to add in here? Any other extra juicy questions for Sean while we've got them? When Sean was talking about reiterations, um, I was on his mailing list. And at one time, I think it's his, 10, he, it's his training for the 10K speeches. And there is a, he's doing this talk that I just love when you were talking, because you were, I think you were an aide for the Clinton administration. And uh, it's, if you can find it on Google, you absolutely have to have it. The talk is mesmer, mesmerizing. I, I just need to be able to publicly say, I love the talk, Sean. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So back to where do you find, so you've got your mission. How did you, did you, were you just one day woke up and said, this is my mission? Or was it a long, slow, arduous process? Because you're driven by your mission, and it's absolutely, I, we can understand that it's in, it's paramount to who you are. But how did you come to this mission? Standing on the shoulder of giants, mentors who had what I want. See, there's, there's two things you have to look for when you're getting a mentor. One is, do they have what you want? Do they have what you want? the kind of lifestyle you want, the kind of friends that you want, the kind of people you want in your life, the kind of attitude, the kind of money. Like, do they have what you want? But then the second thing is, are they someone you'd like to become? Like, do their values match your values? Because maybe they have what you want, but they don't match your energy or they don't match your values or they don't match your attitude or they don't, they're in a match. But once you've got those two things, they have what you want, and they have the attitude and, and they are the kind of person that, that you admire and aspire to be, then you sit with them and they teach you, they teach you, they teach you. And then eventually they get to know you and they get to know you. And then finally it can come out like they see things in you that you don't see in yourself. And one of my mentors asked me, Sean, why were you born? He probably asked me that a hundred times in a row until finally I gave him the answer that made it you know, the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. And that's when I said that it's to rid the world of insecurity. And he said, absolutely. If there was ever anybody on this planet that could speak on that topic as an expert with credibility that we would listen to, it would be a three foot tall man in a wheelchair. Yeah. Sweet. Yes. So thank you. Um, so I'm, so you've, to many, you've had many, many, many successes to, and that's commendable because yes, you are a three foot tall man in a wheelchair. Well, what, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to feel into, what's next for Sean? Where are you going? Like, 
Every successful person that I know has got the next thing just slightly out of their reach. What are you striving for? You've written a book. You've, you've been on beautiful stages. You have this gorgeous wife, uh, beautiful marriage. What's next for Sean? Cocaine and hookers. No. <laughs> that ended the marriage then? <laughs> no, no, no. I would say uh, entertainment. Right within the next five to ten years, you will see me completely transitioned out of the personal growth world and maybe just having a little tiny hanging on community there. Um, and I believe my, my time will be completely as a movie producer and actor. Awesome. Cool. Because wow. it's, time, it's time to take this message and infuse it into, you know, the, the human society using entertainment. More people are reached a year through movies and television and, and videos online than any amount of public speaking stages on the planet. Yep. I mean, I will always have a love, love, love for live performance. So in a few years, we are rolling out my first one-man show, which is going to be different than a speech. It'll be like a two-hour program that will be multimedia. It'll be music. It'll be, it will be amazing. And uh, so that's coming. Um, I actually have something that's called the Sweet 16 list. That is a highly confidential list that I carry on my person everywhere I go. That are the next 16 things that I'm going after beyond my normal things that I have planned right now. And that's the thing. Most people don't realize that if I could give like a behind the scenes on Sean Stevenson that I don't share very often, if at all, actually on podcasts. And that is the shit you see me doing now was things I was planning 10 years ago. Yes. So like, I didn't roll it out today. And the same thing, like the home I live in, the car I drive, the, the next car I drive, the, the staff that I hire, all of them were so crafted carefully by my unconscious mind years in advance and visualized and journaled. If you look through my journal, you would see volumes and volumes of pages, me restating something that is coming until it shows up and then I can stop stating it because it's now here. Wonderful thing. So the, the takeaway for most people is Sean has written out what he wants. Absolutely. Written it, spoken it. Right now we are launching a, uh, a tour of the Southwest where in about six months I'm not going to be flying anywhere for speeches outside of the triangle of Phoenix, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Las Vegas. And if somebody wants me, they have to be doing an event there because I am uh, going to be purchasing a limo that is outfitted so I can sleep in it, I can uh, work in it, and I will only drive to all those gigs because my body can't handle for more than six more months all this travel nonsense, uh, airports and delays and everything. So I will be only doing Southwest presentations in a vehicle. Sweet. And for those that don't know Sean, Sean is the king of self, it used to be, maybe not anymore, the king of self-deprecating humor. He is willing to be the, his own stunt man, his own fall guy. He's willing to show up and be an authentic self. So I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean, for being part of our four days of success. Yeah, I would like to say one thing about that which is, I don't know if deprecation is the word I would use. I think it is that I'm willing to be incredibly raw and embarrassingly vulnerable. Thank you. That's a far better term. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because the truth is, I, you know, deprecation means that I'm, um, I'm making fun of myself. I have 100% respect for myself. I more just show you the raw exposed nerves that's scary for people to look at because they're emotional and they're intense. I'm willing to bear my soul to the world because I know that the soul of mine is no different than theirs. The biggest misconception is that we're all different. 
I believe deep down inside we're all voices in each other's head. And the moment I judge you or push you away or don't like you, it's me having a part of myself that's not at peace. Thank you. Uh, that's that's an beautiful. Absolute. Yeah, definitely. That, that's an incredible, incredible way to bring that all together. Really saying that we're all the same. That's, that's incredible. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Sean, we sincerely, sincerely appreciate you taking this time for us. Um, it has been an incredible, incredible half hour here. Again, thank you. We wish you much success moving forward. And um, that's what we've got. So thank you so much. You're welcome, buddy. All right, guys. Good to meet you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you.